follow that good singing and worship. So uh, would you bow with me? Our Heavenly Father, it is a privilege and an honor to come here. And we appreciate that more in these recent days than perhaps we knew in, in days past when we just took for granted the opportunity to gather together. Lord, I pray that you would keep our the families of this church family healthy and safe and well. Lord, I pray that as we've come together today to worship you through praying, hearing your word, singing your praises, and just gathering together and drawing uh, encouragement from one another. Lord, I pray that all that we do would be pleasing to you. Father, we thank you for this day. It's a day that you've made. So we'll rejoice and we'll be glad in it. And we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, it's Father's Day, so how many dads do we have in the house? Why don't you stand up if you're a dad? I'm already standing, so join me, dads. All right, there's the dads that could make it, and there's some. All right, one more came in. Now, John's in. All right, thank you, guys. All right, got them all. There we go. Dads are busy working. Thanks a lot, guys. Uh, yeah, I've got several of our dads making sure everything's going right, so thank you for that. Uh, we're real thankful. Um, you know, this is uh, Laura's first Father's Day since her dad has gone to be with the Lord, and we're planning, in fact, we're planning just this weekend the memorial service for him because he died during the COVID-19 quarantine. So uh, a lot of people are doing that, not just uh, our family. So we want to remember those. It's just been a difficult time. Um, so we're glad to be getting back to normal or what we think of as normal but I was thinking about that this morning uh, how we take for granted just getting up and going to church and uh, I think I appreciate the opportunity more now than I did and we're going to be looking at Genesis chapter 6 and I guess it's appropriate that it was raining when I came in because we're going to talk about Noah so that gets you in the right frame of mind right when there's some rain falling and you pastors preaching on Noah. So let me get some water as you go to Genesis chapter 6. And um, when we are finished, I, I want to share something with you uh, after we shut down recording and all that stuff after the end of the service. So don't let me forget that, okay? Don't let me leave. Just say, hey, wait a minute, Kevin, well, you got something you want to tell us. <clears throat> and I hope it's a word of encouragement to you. Genesis chapter 6, um, we'll look at a text, but let me give you the, the lead up text here where it says, now it talks to us about Noah, actually in chapter 5 verse 32, we see that Noah was 500 years old and Noah begot Shem, Ham, and Jepheth. So... Um, it's interesting before the flood how life went. You know, you had, uh, you know, I don't know, you got married once you're an adult, 20, 25, 30 years old, and then you had about 480 years for a honeymoon, and then you had kids. <laughs> it's really, you know, it was, it was good times. So sin really messed up the, the world there before the flood. But then it, now it came to pass when men began to multiply on the face of the earth. Uh, when there's a lot of people on the earth, there's a lot of problems. And, you know, as we go from 7 billion to 8 billion, you see that there's a lot of problems. You got climate problems. You got crime problems. You, you know, you, you, you've got problems between the different groups of people. You've got uh, religious problems, spiritual problems, people just kind of doing their own thing. Well, that's what was going on in the days of Noah. And some people have even said that there may have been as many people alive before the flood as there are now. That can be debated, so I'm not going to make a big deal about that. I'm just saying that the Bible says that men began to multiply, and uh, the daughters were born to them, sons of God, and the daughters of men, they were beautiful, and they took wives for themselves, all of whom they chose. Um, 
And the Lord said, My spirit shall not strive with man forever, for he is indeed flesh, yet his days shall be 120 years. I noticed a woman who was a famous singer for the British troops. She was an entertainer of the troops, kind of like Bob Hope. Uh, she died at 103 this weekend. So, you know, that's kind of, you're getting towards the 120 mark that the Bible says that God said, okay, these people live in five, six, seven, eight, nine hundred 900 years, that's over. We're going to about, a, you know, 120 years is going to be the max. Your body is going to wear out at that point. You're, you're not going to be having more little, little wicked evil doers when you're 500 years old like we've been doing. Because this is just, uh, I've considered man, and, and, and I mean, that's what it says. My spirit shall not strive with man forever. He indeed is flesh. And I'm going to make that flesh so that by the time you get to be 120, you're going to want to die. Okay, have you ever talked to anybody that's that old? They're like, you know, I don't know why God's keeping me here. I mean, that's what every one of them says. When you talk to somebody, it's over 100. How'd you live this long? Because God wouldn't let me die. That's what they say. Well, that's, that's kind of how God changes things. There were giants on the earth in those days and also afterwards. When the sons of God came into the daughters of men, they bore children to them. Those were the mighty men who were of old, men of renown. So, so there was a lot of things. In fact, it's interesting when you see that there were giants on the earth in those days. You know, some people kind of hypothesized that perhaps they had found ways to genetically uh, crossbreed in such a way that there was just a huge race of people. There was, you know, they were just trying to figure out ways to do things, uh, to go against their creation, so the Lord saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth and that every intent of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. So the only thing they talked about in the days of Noah was bad stuff. How can we be more bad? The only thing they thought about was how can we be more bad tomorrow than we are today? That was the only thing. If, if Scripture's true and we believe it is... It says that the wickedness of man was great in the earth and that every intent of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. Now, that is a sentence that is overwrought with descriptive words. It's, it's saying don't misunderstand. There, there was nothing good going on in this world at this time. The population had exploded and the more people we had, the worse it was getting. So, the, so it says, and the Lord was sorry that he made man on the earth and he was grieved in his heart. God gave man freedom to choose. And he grieved his heart that every time they had an opportunity to choose, they made the wrong choice. It, it grieved him, just like it grieves him today when he sees us consider to honor God or to please ourselves when we choose to please ourselves. To do right or to do wrong, and we do wrong. And God looked out on this world he had made, and every choice it seemed that was made was the wrong choice that drew people further away. And it's interesting, people living all that long, you know, generation after generation was teaching the wrong way to their children instead of the right way. That's why it just got worse. And you figure a man's been living for several hundred years, he's learned a lot of ways to be bad. I mean, you know, and, and, he's, and he's passing that on to his children, so the Lord said, I will destroy man of whom I've created on the face of the earth, both man and beast, creeping thing, birds are there, for I'm sorry that I've made them. But Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. So this is our father we're going to talk about for today, the father Noah. What we see is that grace rained down on Noah, and I believe that his sons were underneath that shower of grace. Now let's take just a little bit of time. We won't take a whole lot of time. <clears throat> but I want to look at just a few verses about Noah that we find in, in verses 8 and 9. So first off, there was grace. And any time when the world turns from God, we have to have grace. Because, it, you know, as human beings, we're really not much different than Noah and his generation. We just don't live as long. So we can't get into as much trouble as they got into. If we could live to be five, six, seven, eight, nine hundred years old, I think we'd be in the same shape today we were in the days of Noah. 
In fact, we, we, you know, Christ talks about in the days of Noah, it's, it's going to be like that. The only difference is we won't be quite as bad because we, we get cut off before we get that bad. But Noah, there was grace in the eyes of the Lord when he looked at Noah. He saw something different. Noah was a countercultural man. He was not like the other men. There was something different about him. We see what that is. This is the genealogy of Noah. Noah was a just man. That's the first thing I want you to see. He was just. He, he was a, a man who believed in doing right, and he lived in a world that validated, celebrated, and rewarded doing wrong. Okay? Now, I want you to get that in your head if you can. Noah lived in a world to where if you did what was right, you might get persecuted, put down, made fun of. But if you did what was wrong, nobody had a problem with it because everybody was doing what was wrong. Okay? So when God looked at Noah, he saw a man who was just. And, and justice and being righteous and being a man of integrity was not valued in his society. It was not valued anywhere in the world. It's not like he could move to another city or state or, or even to another country. No matter where he went, that was the value of humankind is to be unjust. How bad can we be? And he says that he was perfect in his generation. He was different from everybody else. He was complete. Uh, in his generation, he stood out. And then it says Noah walked with God. So he had a relationship with his creator, with his father in heaven. He, he, he lived that out. Now, you know, it doesn't just say that he knew who God was or he respected God. It says that Noah walked with God. Now that implies that in the morning, it was kind of a good morning, Lord kind of day. And as he went through the day, he would talk, you know, he would walk with God. And I believe that he talked with God. Because when you're walking with somebody and you don't talk, it gets real awkward, you know? Have you ever taken a ride with somebody and the person beside you doesn't say anything for like a long time? Um, I took a ride with a buddy of mine. We went to look at something. We went about probably two hours away and he said, you know, it's been a good ride. We haven't turned the radio on once. I think that's what he did when people wouldn't talk. He would turn the radio on. We just talked all the way as we went. Well, Noah walked with God and he talked with God. And I believe that one of the things, I, you can't convince me that he didn't. That's why I say I believe it. I believe that when he walked with God, he talked with God about his three sons. I mean, if, you, if you've got three kids, would you not talk to God about them? Well, if you're a just and upright, godly man, you would. And that's what he did. So we see in this, in this little snippet here, Noah, who has found grace in the eyes of God, we see just a simple description of this man that found grace in the eyes of God. In this wicked generation he lived in, he was just, he was perfect in his generation. It means he stood out and he walked with God. And then we see again that he begot three sons. So he said he has these three sons. And I believe these three sons are his life. If you talk to any parent, their children or their life. And a godly parent prays for their children. I believe Noah prayed for his boys. We don't see a lot about his boys before the flood. We see a little bit about them after the flood. One was qu not quite as on the same par as the others. Had a little bit more of the, the, the old world with him. But really, I believe the three sons, if you look at this, made it into the ark because of their dad. We don't really see a lot about, oh, and here, here's, you know, Shem and Ham and Jephthah. Here's all the great things they did. And here's the wonderful men they were and how they walked. No, it says their dad walked with God. Now, I think about God, Noah walking with God. Now, remember the world that I just described to you? It was a world where... People lived for hundreds and hundreds of years and they taught their kids ways to sin that you and I can't dream of. You know, one of the reasons we study history is so we'll know 
how we behave and how we made right decisions and wrong decisions. Friends, right now, we, our, our nation and now our world is in upheaval over racial issues where we are reaping seeds that were sown years ago because decisions were made towards other people that we are still feeling the consequences of that. Now, I want you to think about this. Slavery was, you know, many generations ago. How old is our country to the year? Does somebody, can somebody do the math? I'll let you do that. Shout it out when you get there. But uh, think about this. We are feeling things that happened in history that are affecting us today. Okay? Anybody got how old America is? 244 years? Okay, how long have we been over here on this continent? Like, I mean, you know, you start thinking about Europeans. Uh, we've not even been here as long as Noah lived. So we have to look back over 200, 300, 400, 500 years of history just to get a picture of what humankind acts like. Now, you imagine in Noah's day... That was the kind of sinful behaviors that were passed down from a father to a son. 500 years. Let me tell you how we used to do it back in the 1600s, son. And then in the 1700s, we really got wild. Then in the 1800s, you know, during the Industrial Revolution, we learned that we could do this. And then the 1900s, and now here you are. Let me tell you how you can do it. Can you imagine the wealth of corrupt knowledge they had. So when Noah is walking with God, talking to God, I, can't, um, I can imagine he's saying about his sons, Father, please protect them from the evilness all around. Lord, Father, everybody wants my three sons to go like everybody else. Everybody makes fun of my three sons because of the way I walk and talk with you. Everybody makes fun of our family and my three sons because I'm building this ark. Can you just imagine what's going on? And so Noah's walking with God and he's talking, I believe, about his three sons because they are wanting his three sons to leave their foolish old father and just join the world. Now, I believe they did not join the world because of their father's prayers. There was something in them, and I don't know if it's the father-son bond, the parent-child bond, but they said, even though the world's going this way, there's something about dad. We're going to go with him. And it was a struggle. And we even see after the flood, it was a struggle after the flood. But they went with their father, and I believe it's because he interceded for them. So I believe that, you know, I think you can, you can infer from the text that, that, that Noah interceded and and when he walked with God I believe that part of his walking with God was just praying for his boys now these boys are going to repopulate the earth I'm not sure no one understood that completely when he was walking with God and the world was pulling at his sons and can you imagine if those three boys had gone with the world and he'd just been knowing his wife on the ark? Well, we wouldn't be here, would we? We're talking, about our, we're talking about our forefathers here, these three men, whose father prayed for them and interceded for them, and they entered the ark and started all over again. And I believe that all of history, human history, turned with that one man because the Bible says he was unlike any other he was perfect in his own generation. So dads, this is the generation we're in. It's not a very good one. Noah would agree with that. He wasn't in a very good generation. Um, if you try and be a righteous, godly man, a lot of people aren't going to understand that. There's going to be a lot of people going to try and teach your kids to do the wrong thing, to go with the crowd, to take the broad road, and... When we take a stand, a lot of times at that moment, I'm not sure kids fully understand. 
But I think the thing that set Noah apart, just like it says he was a just man, he walked with God, he was perfect in his generation, is because he found grace in the eyes of God. And when he knew that he was a man of grace, he prayed that grace upon his kids. Now, uh, that's what I get from this text. I mean, it, 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 it spends a whole lot of time talking about the world around Noah, but you see that little picture of Noah, this one man standing up while everyone else is bowing down to a wicked and sinful world and system. So that's our job as dads. That's my word of encouragement to you. Um, just like in the days of Noah, there was a lot of, um, you know, you hear a lot about systemic injustice. Can you imagine the systems that were in place in Noah's day? If you were the president of a wicked organization, you could be the president for four, five, six, seven, eight hundred years. I mean, it's amazing what I mean, when, when the Bible talks about how bad it was back then, we can't, we can't imagine. We can't imagine. But when we look at our history, generation, 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 we see a lot of mistakes have been made, a lot of sins have been committed. But because of Jesus, there is grace. Because of Jesus. You know, I think about this. There's a lot of uh, everybody wants, you know, things to be made right. And I think to myself, you know, we can't go back in history and change things. But what if you could say to everybody who says, well, there's all this injustice in the world. There's so many people who've done things wrong. They've done other people wrong. Your people have done my people wrong. What if we said, okay, what do you want? I heard a Native American preach something similar to this one time. He got up and he said, unless you're a Native American, you came here and took my people's land. You killed my people. You put us on reservations. There's just a handful of us left. He said, so we want... <laughs> hey, Felix. <laughs> oh, come on. He wants to be where the preaching is. Let him... Oh, Mom. <laughs> if I have a buddy, it's Felix. All right. So this guy's name's Dobie Weasel. You can look him up on Facebook, he, I mean on, on YouTube. He's a pretty popular preacher. But he says, you know, who knows untold numbers of Native Americans, indigenous people to this land were killed by European settlers and others, Spaniards. He said, we want an eye for an eye, tooth for a tooth, a life for a life. He said, but what if just one person could stand in the place of all those people who should die for those who've died in the past. So he says there was one man who came and he died for the sins of the world. So all the sins that have been committed against you and me and your people group and your family and your tribe and your race and your kindred, all those things can be wiped clean because one man said, I'll die for what was done wrong. I'll die for the sins of the world. See, that's the hope we have. And as Christians, we have the only message that will solve the problems in the world today. So this Father's Day, I want you to remember, Noah knew the one true God. I have no doubt there were countless false gods in Noah's day. He knew the one true God because there was only one God you could walk with and talk with. And that God sent his son Jesus. And he died so that we don't have to pay for the sins of our own sins, our fathers, our grandfathers, or anyone else. He died for all the sins. And if you put your faith and trust in him, then the grace of God that was on Noah will be on you. And that's the only hope we have in this world is grace. We cannot fix the sin problem. We cannot make it right. We cannot undo sins. That, I mean, have you ever tried to undo your own sins? You can't go back over, you know, 20, 30, 40, 50, however many years and say, okay, I'm going to go back and make everything right. I'm going to, I mean, they're, they're, you know, the, the store that you stole a gumdrop from isn't even there anymore. You, as a kid, you know, you can't make everything right. Someone's got to make it right for you, and that's Jesus. So that's the message we have today, and that's a message of hope. Let's pray. Father, we thank you so much for your son, Jesus. We end on Jesus because everything does begin and end with Jesus Christ. Lord, we have no hope apart from him. We have nothing 
of which we can be proud of or thankful for. Lord, it's all hopeless, and we are utterly helpless without your son, Jesus. Father, we thank you for Noah's example. Lord, he, he lived a life that was hard to live in a place where it was hard to live it with, with really no encouragement from those around him. So, Father, I want to pray for our dads today, our dads of all ages. Lord, no matter how old or young we are, nobody's as old as Noah was at 500. So, Father, I pray we would continue to be influencers. Lord, I, I think of Laura's dad when he was alive, and I know I would sometimes get up and hear him praying for his family. And I've heard my dad praying for his family. Father, I thank you for that legacy that, that I have. I know much of why I am where I am today is because of a godly father and a godly father in the Lord that prayed for me. So, Father, I want to pray for the fathers here today and those who may be watching, who may be listening. And, Lord, I pray that uh, we would be men of grace. And we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, we're going to sing. And if you need to make any spiritual decision, if you need to talk with me, I can social distance and talk with you. We can go over here and be six feet apart. <coughs> if you need me to pray for you, I will. But uh, we're going to sing a song, aren't we? What are we singing? Great is thy faithfulness. Take it away. Great is thy faithfulness. You want to stand with me? We'll sing this together. <clears throat>
to you.